Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com forward slash rive to receive the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Tesla stock is down 60% from its all-time high, and the company may be facing more challenges over the next few years than it ever has in its history as a public company. I want to talk about four of those challenges and talk about what investors need to look at in their financial statements because I think there are going to be a lot of changes in the company's finances. It's not going to be all 50% growth going forward. There are going to be some little nuances that we want to look at. So here are the big things that I am looking at in 2023. The first thing that I think we really need to look at is inventory. In the most recent quarterly shareholder letter, Tesla actually admitted that they have been managing inventory for the end of the quarter. What do I mean by this? This means that Tesla is shipping as many customers as possible their product right before the quarter ends so that they don't have much inventory on the balance sheet. Now, if there's not inventory on the balance sheet, that means you have more cash on the balance sheet. If inventory goes up, typically cash goes down. So it makes your balance sheet look better at the end of the quarter. They said that about a third of sales are happening in the final two weeks of the quarter and two thirds are happening in the final month. So that is a huge management of inventory that they're doing on a quarterly basis. They also said that that was going to stop. This is the chart that they showed investors and said this blue line, this is the historical state is what they call it. Hypothetical weekly delivery patterns is what we're seeing on the left. So that you, so you can see that deliveries are spiking towards the end of the quarter and there's almost there's very few deliveries at the beginning of the quarter. Now there's no y axis on this chart, so keep that in mind this is just for explanatory purposes, but they're going to be leveling this out. That's what they're saying. This is the red line here. That should improve costs. That's absolutely true but it will have a big impact on inventory on the balance sheet and probably the company's cash level as well. The chart on the right here is resulting number of vehicles in transit. At the end of the quarter is where this bottoms here. That means that Tesla doesn't have much inventory at the end of the quarter because there are very few vehicles in transit that will rise leading to an increase in inventory. So these are kind of showing the exact same thing. It's telling us that Inventory is going to be something that we're going to need to keep an eye on in 2023 when those fourth quarter results come. Don't be surprised to see a big increase in inventory and a big drop in the amount of cash on the balance sheet just because Tesla isn't going to be managing their inventory in the same way as they have in the past. Potentially the biggest change for Tesla in 2023 is going to be increased competition. We've seen a number of companies come out with really compelling electric vehicles. That's something Tesla hasn't really had to deal with over the last decade because most electric vehicles were simply not all that compelling. They didn't have long range. They didn't have great design, but that's really changing. A couple that I want to highlight, Rivian is often seen as kind of the next Tesla, the next hot EV company, but they do have a differentiated product because they're making a truck and an SUV. So people who are looking at an electric vehicle, but want a truck or an SUV that will fit seven passengers com comfortably, Maybe looking at Rivian over the next couple of years instead of a Tesla. Another one is Volkswagen. Volkswagen not only has the ID4 out, which is a far lower price point than Tesla can offer. It's a really compelling vehicle. I have been in these. It is really the, the number one choice that I would have if I was going to buy a vehicle of that size, an electric vehicle of that size. So that is one to keep an eye on. Another one from Volkswagen is the Buzz, which apparently is going to begin production next year, probably available in the US in 2024. But there are a number of other offerings as well. So people who are looking at an electric vehicle or any sort of new vehicle are gonna have more competition than they've ever had when comparing against a Tesla. This is at the same time that Tesla has been raising prices. So I think there is going to be a different competitive dynamic over the next two years than there has been in Tesla's history. That will be something to keep an eye on. Another potential point of pressure is rising interest rates. A year ago, it wasn't uncommon to see 0% or 0.9% financing for new vehicles. That is completely gone right now because interest rates have risen. Now we would be lucky to see four or five, six percent interest rates for new vehicles. That's going to impact every company, including Tesla. Depending on the rate that consumers can get, it simply makes a vehicle more expensive. The higher rate, higher rates are a little bit less compelling to buy that new vehicle. And so that's gonna be a pressure point for everybody in the industry, including Tesla, could put some downward pressure on the amount of volume that's being sold in 2023 and 2024. Now, another risk related to that is the possibility that there's going to be a recession. A lot of economists expect there to be a recession in the US and potentially globally 
in 2023. So what happens in a recession? Well, people pull back on different kinds of spending. Maybe you put off buying that new vehicle for another year or two. Maybe you downgrade to a little bit less expensive vehicle. Maybe instead of buying an electric vehicle, which is still trading for a premium right now, you decide to buy an internal combustion engine vehicle. These are very real questions that consumers are facing. And Tesla is a company that's growing capacity about 50% per year. So if demand for their products comes down, that's going to put pressure on margins, on pricing. This is not something that Tesla has experienced as a public company, but it's something that the auto industry has gone through over and over again over the last century. This is the reason that auto companies are typically very poor investments because they're very cyclical. You go into a recession, you have too much capacity. How do you cut costs? Well, there's so much fixed costs that go into building an automobile that there's only limited costs that you can cut. And that's when losses start to occur. This is what happened during the financial crisis when General Motors went bankrupt. We saw Ford facing its own financial challenges at that time. So we have seen this in the last 15 years. It just hasn't happened to Tesla. This is one of the reasons that the stock is down 60%. Investors just simply don't know how Tesla is going to handle a potential recession coming up and consumers not buying vehicles that can reach upwards of $100,000 over the next few years. So we will see how that plays out. The metric to watch on all of these things for Tesla is gross margin. Tesla has the best gross margins in the industry, better than all of the other legacy automakers. This is partially because they have a differentiated business model. They don't have to deal with dealerships. They can have a little different service business model. But if that gross margin starts to come down, it really eats away at the bottom line, not only net income, but also cash flow very quickly. So in 2023, watch not only shipments, but gross margin, how much pricing power do they have in the market? Because that will tell us exactly where Tesla is headed as a business. Leave your comments in the comments section below. I'd love to hear what you think about Tesla and these four pressure points that I think investors should be looking at in 2023. Subscribe to Rive Investing. I really appreciate it. And I will see you here next time.